Okay, hello guys. Welcome back to another video, Superman and Lois, Season 4, Episode 4. I've just finished the episode, like literally, ow, my elbow, <laughs> two minutes ago. I don't know if you heard the elbow pop. It was kind of loud, but I'm just hyped. All I have to say is finally, 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 we have an episode where I can breathe, where my chest isn't tight, where I'm not worried about death the whole episode. I already know some... Some people on the internet who are already complaining about this episode, they were complaining about it before when the description was given, they're complaining about it while it's happening. They say it's filler and stupid and just get back to the drama. You can obviously have your own opinions and in a way I can understand those opinions, but this episode was needed. I needed it and a lot of fans needed it. Uh, an episode where there's jokes, where I can smile, where the, the entire family is together, where there's partying. This was a breath of fresh air. Anyways, now that I've said my thoughts, let's get into the episode. So, the episode starts pretty emotional after just saying this episode was a breath of fresh air. Uh, Lois is at Gramps' grave, and Clark returns. Also, I think it's pretty cool that Jarrell and Gramps are buried next to each other. Just, just a side note. But when Clark came back with a freaking regular, like, normal suit and glasses on, like not suit his superhero suit, just like a, a suit you wear to work, with his glasses on, I was, I was shocked to say the least. Uh, just from that, I was shocked to see him at all. I didn't think he'd be on his feet this quickly, let alone flying. Uh, but him and Lois connect, they hug. And the boys come out and hug and the directing decision to have no sound from this scene but just the score was fantastic it landed perfectly then we get into the episode as we get a time jump uh i freaking hate that i can't remember uh, already i i just watched it i just watched it five minutes ago i can't remember how long it was but it was two or three weeks uh clark looks at his scar as lois looks at hers and clark narrates how time goes fast and how family is fragile and I was already nearing tears at this point. <laughs> I was like, oh great, I'm gonna be sad again. But after this, we see Kyle and Chrissy for the first time this season. Uh, they're in his apartment and they talk about the wedding. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> but then we see Clark teaching Jonathan how to use his powers in the icy snow. And I just have to say, was I wrong? Was I wrong about last week? Like last week I said there's no way Jonathan suddenly just has powers he gets to keep. But I'm thinking I'm thinking he does now, unless they pull something soon. Like I'm kinda disappointing in the writing if he does. Like like Jordan had to earn his powers and need an intense training. Where Jonathan just has every single power and knows what to do with them without training. Like if that's true, I I guess I can excuse it, um, because of the short season and budget cuts. But still. Anyways. Clark is teaching Jonathan how to use his abilities, and I, uh, I was just so happy to see Clark again, man. Like, I, I don't think you understand. Just him interacting with Jonathan was just, it made me smile. Uh, but they decided to race each other for some reason. I was practically shouting at Clark in this scene to take it easy. He did not listen to me and went pretty freaking fast, and his heart uh, kind of affected him enough to crash onto the ice and stop flying. We come back from commercial to see Chrissy and Lois chat about the wedding, and Chrissy tells Lois that a pipe burst at the court, which I'm guessing was another budget cut issue where they can't use new locations to film, or it was just that they wanted to do it at the barn. Either way, it worked out fine, but yes, the wedding does end up at the barn, and Chrissy asks Lois to be her maid of honor. Lois then returns home to another directing decision I loved, loved, I, I need to look up who the director for this episode was, but uh, this is where we start with Lois's POV as she enters the house, and we hear the conversation happening between Clark and Jonathan a few rooms away, but just like we're in her head, we follow her, and as she goes in the room, and we hear them talking from a distance, so we obviously know that Lois overheard their conversation when she interrupts them. Uh, and we also get the great reaction from Clark when he sees that Lois got home when he tries to act like they totally weren't just talking about the fact that his heart caused him to crash. 
Also, this is definitely another example of his now limited powers. I'm going to talk about it more later. Uh, but because his hearing would normally pick up on the fact that Lois entered the house. But Lois confronts him about the incident and he tries to make it sound like it wasn't that big of a deal. Which was hilarious. I'm, I'm glad he's back. Then we see a scene of Chrissy, Kyle, and her mom at the diner as they interact for the first time. Uh, and man, this scene was funny and uncomfortable as hell. Like, uh, when, the, when the mom said Chrissy's practically the same age as Sarah, I lost it, man. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, the mom does not approve of this situation. Chrissy starts to prepare for the wedding in the Kent house as Kyle prepares in the bottom floor. Uh, I should have mentioned Chrissy prepared in the top floor, but yeah. But as they prepare, Jordan hears stupid idiot Gretchen leaving Otis a voicemail on the phone, and Jordan tells Jonathan to go tell Lois so they can go after her. It's a lot of goes. Meanwhile, Clark and Kyle get to chat in the barn about Clark being back to life and the fact that he wants to be him, him to be his best man. Clark tells Kyle that he is the catering under control with indoor electrical grills this scene was the funniest in the entire episode like the look that kyle gives clark here is priceless the scene gets even better when kyle makes clark bring him inside to the grills and try out the food and kyle actually ends up liking the taste <laughs> i also uh love a callback here to season one uh where clark says he used kyle's rib recipe where in season one, Kyle tells Lois that he will get her a secret recipe to his ribs. It's just great. Lois and Jonathan go to confront Gretchen about her situation, and Lois tells her that Doomsday killed Gramps, and she don't even shed a tear. Like, really? You saw him in that Hawaiian shirt? He was very attractive. I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted, uh, but Lois says she can offer protection to Gretchen since she obviously has left the little rat hole that she's been hiding in uh, due to Lex's orders. She says, nah, then Lois and Jonathan leave, pretty much. Then we go back to the barn to see Coach Gaines getting them keys ready. He's so freaking funny, man. <laughs> like, Coach. But, but yeah, Coach Gaines is playing the, the keys for the wedding. He's got like... He's the DJ, basically, and I love that decision. It's great. <laughs> Sarah talks to Jordan about his mental state and why he's been down lately. Um, I was honestly surprised to see her in this episode with uh, the budget cuts, but, but didn't mind it, except one scene. Couple of meerkats here. Yeah, I kind of cringed, but whatever. Jordan tells her he blames himself for his dad's death and that he is no hero that when it was time for him to actually step up he couldn't do it against lex he talks later with lois where she tells him to open up about his feelings he says he's the reason clark and gramps died that he is not mad that she chose jonathan over him on who to save he's mad that she was right in her decision only he didn't live up to that decision and blames himself even more she tells him that neither clark nor Gramps would want this kind of a response for them and that she will help him work through this. Finally, build up to the wedding and it's starting until Chrissy just dips and leaves. Yeah, like, like great. Uh, but Lois goes and finds her through some super hearing help and tells her that she is there for her. Chrissy says things are going too fast with Kyle and Lois aids her in the knowledge of her own relationship with the values of respect and love in her relationship that she sees with Chrissy and Kyle's as well. Back at the barn, Jonathan and Jordan hear a fire in Metropolis and Jordan urges Jonathan to go even if he don't have a suit. Jonathan flies to Metropolis to where we see the building that I had trouble breaking down in the teaser breakdown bit, if you check that out, uh, which is like on fire, like insanely on fire uh it turns out that gretchen is also in this fire and she says he's trying to kill me when she sees jonathan like like jonathan man she knows who you are sees your abilities for the first time and knows lex personally lex does not need free information but this guy with the fire weapons on his arm shoots right at jonathan and gretchen both of them and i could have sworn that gretchen burned here but i guess not he ended up getting a away with free info 
Sorry, I mean Gretchen ended up getting away with reinfo, not he. Jordan comes yelling at Clark, asking him how he hasn't heard the commotion yet, and Clark listens, then hears it. Um, this scene, once again, uh, showing that Clark is no longer the Superman we know. He can't fly as fast, he can't hear as good. You know what, maybe he's just getting old. He did have Gramps' heart, but he hears that Jonathan needs help, flies over with his suit on, and doesn't even try to hide himself. Like, like, bro, the world can't know you are alive when Lex wants to kill you. But he shows himself anyways and pushed through the fire weapons with his chest. Like, oh my gosh, I, this episode was stressful, kind of. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> he he, he, he could have just super sped around it or anything else. Uh, but he just tanks the fire with his new heart. Uh, up until the point where he reached the weapons, causing them to blow up right on his chest. And luckily he's fine, as we know of so far with this episode. Like, that was a pretty bad explosion. Might, might be next episode, I don't know. He returns to the barn and the wedding to give Kyle a good speech about being patient and seeing things work out. This is, this is honestly a sweet moment between the two. I honestly, I honestly was a, a little shocked to see Kyle even ask Clark to be his best man since he's known people in Smallville like all his life from around town and the fire station. But, but this scene made me happy that Clark was his best man. Chrissy comes back after her talk from Lois and her and Kyle announce that they are delaying the wedding. But it is still party time. Uh, I don't think y'all will ever know how thankful I was to see Coach Gaines get to tap those keys and play his songs, man. The whole barn parties. Chrissy's mother is proud of the strength of her daughter. That she can delay the wedding when she's not ready, unlike uh, Chrissy's mother's marriage. Her own, she blames herself and she's proud of her daughter. It was great. They all dance as we hear the music and it was just a genuinely happy scene. And look at this backflip. Like, like apparently this uh, was just them messing around on set. And this backflip was like not told to do. He Like the actor was not told to do this. <laughs> the show ends, however, with Clark and Lois about to um, do some stuff in the bedroom. <laughs> like, like he just came back to life with a new heart. I was actually kind of nervous. His heart. <laughs> wouldn't be able to take this i don't think it's the best decision uh, and i was also thinking uh that like one of the last things gramps said in his video message was that he will always the be there for lois even in death since his heart will still be beating in clark and i i guess i just had the weird thought that gramps was still there during this <laughs> Uh, but they kiss, and Lois' phone buzzes. But I guess they don't care, and they keep on kissing as the camera pans to the phone, revealing four different news outlets saying that Superman lives. For one, are they all really going to release at the same time? And for two, how? <clears throat> I'm sure that, that is the question we are all wondering. How do they know that Superman lives? Clark had John Henry take that fire guy to a cell where he couldn't speak about his experience. I mean, the, the best that I can come up with is that Gretchen saw Superman and tried to get in her good graces with Lex again by confessing the info to him in the news since Lex just sent someone to kill her. Or maybe someone saw him flying to the building. Uh, I was also wondering if there were like satellites or some sort of ge geographical reading that Clark was zooming around the skies and crashing into like the ice and the ground uh, but I guess we'll have to see next week anyways guys thank you so much for watching this video especially to those who watched all the way through I will have a video breaking down the teaser for next week and ooh, this is a good one all right guys thank you guys so much for watching have a good rest of your day goodbye